Oh, I bet you're enjoying this. Intensely. So, who was it? The aerobics instructor's husband? How did you know? I can't afford to be off for long. We could be looking at a comminuted fracture. Now, this is where the bone breaks into more than two pieces. Do you want me to tell him? No, really, it's not necessary. I don't mind. It'd sound better coming from someone who spoke the same language. Sad. You. Yes. Oh, what's the point in talking to you? Look, your trouble is you try so hard to be littleness efficient, you sometimes come across as being a bit cold. Cold? You just have to show that there's a warm heart beating down there somewhere. Oh, there is, isn't there? just said no thank you you're incredible it'll be all over the clinic in no time oh and it worries you that people might think you're capable of a little passion no it worries me that they might think i'd be interested in you oh, come on oh, let go of me it's a wonder no one's done you for sexual harassment the way you behave well, calm down no how dare you attack me like that how dare you even think i'd be another one of your conquests i thought you'd credit me with a little more intelligence oh, okay so i wasn't exactly subtle that doesn't i'm not mean interested some kind in your of... excuses but take a tip from me that approach might work with your randy little aerobics instructor or the occasional bored nurse. But most women will find it just plain obnoxious. Oh, you'd be surprised. Why don't you grow up? No, she wouldn't. Well, she did. And it was very well. It was very passionate. <laughs> Still, you shouldn't jump to conclusions, Madge. She was pretty annoyed when I walked in. I suspect they're trying to keep it a secret. But it's probably been going on for ages. Nah, I tell you, he's not her type. What is her type? Oh, she plays her cards very close to the chest, that one. Have you noticed? She never talks about a man or a boyfriend, anything. Maybe you should try bagging the staff room. I couldn't help walking in on them. <laughs> if you've got time to sit around gossiping, then you've got time to fill out your patient oh, notes. No, sorry, was... Get on with it, nurse. Yes, Miss Burton. Oh, look, who have we got here? Hi, Marge. Miss Burton, as beautiful as ever. Oh, thank you, Rowan. And what are you in for today? They're receiving my leg again. Probably some new surgeon needs practice. <laughs> Hi, Spunk Bucket. Oh, hello, Rowan. To my bed, nurse, and don't spare the horses. Oh, you're still here? Oh, my way out. Oh, I should warn you. You won't get any overtime out of McKenna. He's as tight as a fish as normal. Where are you staying? Ocean View Inn. Wow, don't tell me the clinic's paying for that. No, not anymore. Jenny's kindly agreed to put me up at her place until I can find something more permanent. I'm moving in there tonight. She's nice, eh, Jenny? Haven't you got any friends or relatives? No. Really? I thought you would have had I some... I would have thought it was none of your business. Hey, wait on. Isn't that Arnie? You can socialise later. But, Miss Burton... No buts about it. I'll tell Dr Fleming you're here. Here we go. Some things never change. And it does. See you later, Arnie. <laughs> What's wrong with the kid? Uh, he's got a thing called osteogenesis imperfecta. Wow. Sounds impressive. How do you get it? It's congenital. I was born with it. <laughs> Rowan, put that thermometer back in your mouth. His bones are very brittle. Last time he was in here, he broke three ribs coughing. I wasn't coughing, I was laughing. Rowan, I won't tell you again. Well, is there anything you can do? Uh, reset the bones, that's about it. There's no cure. He's an amazing young man. He never lets anything get him down for long. Say, have you thought about coaching the junior league? I've got a mate of mine. Along with all the other has-beens, forget it. They'd be wrapped. Look, I'd rather get some crappy office job. Make out I never even played the game. But that'd be such a waste. If you just talk... Look, I said forget it. Hey, smells good. Where have you been? You were supposed to help me. Sorry. 
Hey, what's this for? To put in the room for Alison. So, what do you want me to do? Veggies, carrots, sprouts. <sighs> Not sprouts. Alison likes them. Hey, should I duck down the pub and get a cask? Only if you want white. I've already bought a couple bottles of red. You know I don't like red. Well, let me guess. Alison does. Serves you right for having such an uncultured palate. If you start with all that snobby wine talk tonight, I swear I'll... I'll play my public enemy records after dinner. Go ahead. If you want to scare her away. Oh, hi, Alison. Hi, Steve, Sammy. Hi. I hope I'm not too early. Being at that hostel on my own gave me the creeps. No, that's cool. Um, check out the room. Dinner won't be long. Hey, you didn't have to go through so much trouble for me. Oh, no trouble. Just a lamb roast. <laughs> Shut up and keep peeling, slave. Hey, Alison, thought you might like the mirror for your room. Oh, I told Steve. Look, I'm not so sure if I can move in yet. I know, but if you do, it's all yours. I'll set it up now if you like. I'll help. I can manage. Do the veggies. It's heavy. They need to go in soon. This is your room through here. I warned you, man, lay off. She's not going to fall for your slummy routines. Well, we'll see, won't we? She's not completely and utterly in love with me by the end of the night, then it's open season. But until then, she's all mine. <laughs> you don't stand a chance. She's more my type. <laughs> she's already mad for me, man. Hey, guys, is there a key for this lock? Off at last. Yes. You know, you shouldn't feel bad about handing cases over to the night staff. No one expects you to work back so often and we have to have some private life. I don't mind, really. I must say I was surprised to hear about you and Chris Warner. Oh, Marjorie didn't waste any time. How long have you been seeing him? Well, ever since he started working here. On a professional basis only. But Marjorie said... Oh, I can imagine what Marjorie said, but she's got it all wrong. That's what I thought. I did find Marjorie's story a little bizarre. I wouldn't have thought you'd be interested in Marjorie's gossiping. I'm not. Not usually. I was just concerned. I know it's none of my business, but I wouldn't like to see you with someone like that. Thank you for being concerned, but... Uh... It's none of my business. You're absolutely right. Sorry. Forget it. That's what I intend to do. Night. I'm not going to let the roast dry out. If your date's late, too bad. She'll be here on time. So what's her name? Name. Name. You do know her name, don't you? Or didn't the escort agency tell you? I know her name. It's... Um... Well, what is it, man? Well, the bathroom would be nice with a bit of a clean. Yeah, I know. Sam's job. What? You said it was your turn. Why don't you pour the wine, Sam? Come on. Alison, sit here. Thanks. I'll be ready to serve soon. Isn't there someone else coming? Yeah, Sam's girlfriend. And she better be here soon or Sam will have to go and look for her. She's not really my girlfriend. Oh, come on, Sam. Of course she is. Don't be so bashful. She's more a friend of Steve's, actually. What? And here she is. Why don't you open the door, Steve-o? She and Steve, they're practically engaged. Hi, Steve. Thanks for asking me. Yeah. Mmm, don't you smell yummy. Wow, that looks great. You're Alison, aren't you? I'm Gina. I work across the road from the clinic. Yeah, in the coffee shop. Right, I've seen you before. Uh -huh. Where do you want me to sit? Here? Yeah, then I can talk to Steve. And you and Sam can get to know each other. So, do you think you'll move in? I'm not sure. Why not? It'll be a hoot living with these guys. Mm. And we'll be able to go out, the four of us, all the time. Yeah, that would be a great idea, wouldn't it, Steve? -o? So how long have you known Steve? No, not long. Oh, ages. Ever since I started working in the coffee shop, right? Not long after the clinic opened. They're like this. More wine, Alison? Oh, no. No, more than one glass and I go all funny. Okay. Hey, you know, I nearly moved in here once. Oh, why didn't you? Well, this friend of Steve's came to stay unexpectedly. He was here for ages and when he moved out, a relative of Sam's needed somewhere to stay. And then there was the fire. Fire? Yeah, we were lucky the whole house didn't go up. So I decided to stay home after all. Well, you can still move in. No. No. No, it's cheaper at home and I'm saving to go overseas. Yeah. Anyway, I think Alison will be the perfect flatmate. Yeah, it would be great to have someone to talk to when Steve's on an all-night shift. And vice versa. I, I always feel I can relate better to women. And some guys you just can't talk to. They're too immature. Emotionally. Fortunately, Steve's always got Gina to talk to. Yeah, he's always popping into the coffee shop for a chat, aren't you, Steve? Yeah. Um, look, why don't we go into the couch area? It'd be far more comfortable. Ah, oh, maybe I'll sit on the floor. <laughs> Nice. No, 
Here you go. Now I'd better go and make up your bed. I didn't get time before. Oh, please let me help. No, no, I can manage. Trudy. So, have you worked for old McKenna before? Only met him yesterday. King of the nerds, eh? Well, I can't see myself playing golf with him, but I'm reserving judgment. Well, how come you took the job back at the clinic then? I wanted to come home. Guatemala a bit too wild for you? No. I liked it and I wanted to stay, but... But what? There are other things I want to do with my life. What about you? What do you want to do? Well, Mum hasn't been in your ear already, has she? Why do you ask that? This isn't going to be another study hard, go to uni lecture. <laughs> no, I promise. I'm just interested. Couldn't stand it if she put you on the case too. Mum thinks I need a father figure to put me right every now and then. Trouble is, she chose McKenna. What happened to your father? He's around somewhere. Well, I didn't want to go to uni at first. It wasn't until I bummed around for a while that I knew what I wanted to do. I wouldn't mind school so much if I could get a break from it every now and then. That's why I wanted to take a year off and get a job and buy some wheels. But Mum insisted I stay at school. Well, what about a part-time job? You could soon save up enough to buy a second-hand bomb. What about a schoolwork? Well, Mum, you see what I mean? Well, perhaps we could find the right sort of job. Yeah. I'll keep my ears open. Yes, why not? I'll have a word to Michael. Hey, Arnie, how's it going? Hey, Chris, move the TV to the centre, will you? So Arnie can see it. No, it's OK. It's your last game. Don't you want to see the replay? You're brilliant. No, I was there. I can remember. It must be incredible to get in front of all those people. I'd give it anything if I could just kick a football and not wasn't going to break my foot. You heard the kid. Shift the telly. How's that, Ron? Yep. Here's the bit. Coming up. We took that pass. There. How'd you know who's going to do that? Uh, instinct, I guess. It's either something you're born with or you're not. Yeah. Can't help bad luck. Your operation's set for 10 o'clock. Your surgeon is Mr O'Reilly. Is he good? He's the best. But you still don't think I'll be able to play? Hey, I told you. You're just going to have to get used to it. Anyway, good luck. I'll check on you later. Hey, see you later, Ron. Yeah, bye. What's wrong? Oh, I've stuffed up my leg. I reckon I'll have to give up football. Oh, well. At least you've done it. At least you've been the best. That's something. Hey, you should be a coach or something. Nah. Why not? There's heaps of kids who kill to be taught by you. You think so? You ducks quick. You'll be brilliant. Would you like more coffee, Alison? Mm. No, thanks. It'll keep me awake. I have port. I can get something mm, for I really must be going. I don't want to miss the last bus. I'll give you a lift. I don't think you should be driving, Gina. You're dead right. Sam, give Gina a lift home. What? Why me? You can. In fact, I don't think any of you guys should be driving. Yeah, you're right. Um, look, why don't you stay the night? Mm, I don't know. Thanks, Steve. That'd be great. And I'll call a taxi for Gina. You don't want to spend another night at that creepy old hostel, do you? No. So why don't you crash the night here, get the feel of the room, and then you can decide if you want it. You sure it's no trouble? None at all. Can you lend me some money for a taxi? I'm broke. Me mm. too. Sorry. Oh, would it be okay if Gina stayed the night as well? No. no. The couch is too small. Yeah. My bed's huge. Couch probably isn't that small yeah. for a woman. Yeah. Well, I don't mind. Great. That'd be fantastic, just like a slumber party. Come on. Night, guys. Night. Night. Mm. It could be the greatest romance since Liz Taylor and Richard Burton. Judy and Martina. Cut it out. Rod and Rachel. <laughs> I deny everything. Deny it? Why? I'd say it'd be your greatest conquest. Look, I'll let you know when there's been any conquest. Uh, sure. So, uh, tell us, Doc, how would you rate her? I'm sorry, I was just... Well, Meredith. Oh, damn. Oh, yes, Mrs Higgins. Yes, of course I remember you. You've been hemorrhaging. Oh, yes. For the whole week. 
And you had cramps. Mm. No, no, I wouldn't go in for any alternative medicine, no. No, I'd come right in here if I were you. Oh, well, I, I could tell the doctors, yes, but they make it a policy not to give a diagnosis on the phone. No, I really think you should come in. I mean, with hemorrhaging and cramps, this really sounds as though you should see someone. Oh, thank you. Yes, well, I'm only doing my job, of course. Yeah, I look forward to meeting you too. Yes, come straight to reception. All right, Mrs Higgins. Right, I'll see you then. Right. Bye. Oh, Meredith, good morning. Biscuit? No, thank you. Oh, I made them myself. Marjorie, would you please stop spreading rumours about Chris Warner and me all over the clinic? Rumours? You know what I mean. It had to be you. You were the only one who saw us. Kissing, you mean? Yes. Well, if you will insist on mauling each other in the staff room, you can hardly complain about there being talk. We were not mauling each other. Oh, yes, I probably did mention it to someone. But only the fact that you were kissing. You can hardly call that spreading rumours, Dr Fleming. Marjorie, I am not in the habit of kissing men in public, and certainly not Chris Warner. God, you know what he's like. We are not lovers, nor have we ever been lovers. And I don't like coming to work to snickers and jokes from people who are stupid enough to listen to idle gossip. In future, I would appreciate it if you would mind your own business. Yes, Dr Fleming. I'm sorry. Thank you. Jenny, Dr McKenna in. Yes, but he's going out for lunch shortly. Then he's in all afternoon. Right. Oh, Marge, any developments in the Meredith Chris Warner story? Jenny, there is nothing going on between those two. You should know better than listen to gossip in this place. Marge? Mm. Those employment forms you told me to fill in. Well, that was prompt. Thank you. And thank you for the suggestion, honey. Sorry? The part-time job. I hope you thank Dr McKenna. Yeah. Now, off you go. Or you'll be late for school. Nick, you don't seem too pleased. I suppose it's OK. What is it, shoveling manure or something? Working over the road at the recreation centre. What's wrong with that? It's over the road where Mum and McKenna can keep an eye on me under constant surveillance. See you later. Aha. I've been looking for you. Hey, Kirsty, what's up? Have a look at this. Yeah, very interesting. What is it? I remember the designer t-shirt you sold me, the red one? Well, the colour ran when I washed it last night. You're kidding. Ha ha. More to the point, it ruined half my wardrobe. Well, you should have washed it separately, like it says on the instructions. There are no instructions. Yeah, but everyone knows you wash anything new separately, Kirsty. <sighs> what's going on? Look, it shrank as well. It's unwearable. Oh, these are t-shirts you sold us, Steve. Oh, damn, I bought two. If it's going to look like that, I want my money back. Oh, now, come on. Oh, we should all get our money back. It's only fair. Otherwise, we may have to put both your legs in a cast. Look, I'm totally broke. I had to buy everything for dinner last night. Food, wine, everything. Well, tell them, Alison. It can't have cost that much. And I've also laid out for some new gear. Oh, what is it this time? Um, I'll take a check. It'll only bounce. Okay, okay, IOUs, oh. redeemable in two weeks. Oh, come on, it's all I can do. Okay, right on this. Mm. McKenna tells me they're letting you out today. Yeah, still can't do anything with the hand though. Yeah, well, what did you expect? I don't know, but I got a gig with the band this weekend. They're history without me. I don't suppose you? Me? Why not? You still play, don't you? Yeah, but I'm working. I got this new job. This is a job, and I better be a bit more fun than anything else. Whatever you do, don't drop me. Ah, there we go. You're so strong, Miss Burden. Ever sort of taking up wrestling? None of your lip. Good luck with your op, Arnie. Yeah, pal. Hey, he's a great kid. Mm. Hey, this friend of yours, the one involved with the junior league. He'd jump at the chance. Do you want me to ring him? Yeah. Thanks, I'd appreciate it. Great. Hello, here's trouble. Morning, Arnie. Chris. Howdy, Doc. Just wanted to say good luck. Thanks. Mr Riley's an excellent surgeon. He'll have you back on your feet in no time. Good. 
Because I've got a lot to do. <laughs> Excuse me, mate. Uh, Meredith, can I have a word? Sure. Uh, look, we've always worked really well together and, um, well, I thought we were friends, sort of. And I'd hate for what happened yesterday to change any of that. What happened yesterday was too ridiculous for words. Why should it affect anything? Fine. Just, just so long as that's what you really think, I mean, if that's all you want to say. I think I said everything that needed to be said yesterday. Hope it didn't hurt too much. <laughs> no, nothing dislocated. Good. You know, I should probably be insulted that you took so long to get to me. I mean, you must have tried it on everyone but Marjorie by now. I had such a good time last night. Steve's funny, isn't he? <laughs> That's one word for it. He runs kind of hot and cold, you know? Like when Sam told me that Steve really wanted to invite me but was too shy. I thought, Steve, shy? He's the last person in the world you'd think was shy. Just goes to show. Just goes to show what Mum says is true. What about? Men. What do you mean? It doesn't matter. Tell me. Well, I heard Sam and Steve talking. Steve was really annoyed that Sam invited you. He just wanted to have a crack at Alison. Alison? <sighs> yeah. Sam and Steve both want to get their grubby hands on her. Steve didn't even want me to be there? I'm sorry, Gina. <sighs> I feel like dying. Look at it on the bright side. At least you found out what a juke he was before you got any deeper. Why does this sort of thing always happen to me? I'm such a fool. Your trouble is you're too nice. Not anymore. I want revenge. Now you're talking. There's got to be a way to get back at them. Mm. There is. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, sometimes you're going to be such a bitch, I love it. Is it you or is it me? Lately I've been lost. It seems I think the change is what I need. If I'm looking for the chance for the dream, Yesterday's and another place Just living for the times we've seen When the writing on the wall Says I'll be shining and straight If you want to find a way Of searching for another world It's hard to see this program was made with the help of your broadcasting fee, so you can see more of New Zealand on air.